Hey survivors and thrivers, this is part two of the Obsessed Fly Monkeys. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Click the bell icon to receive notifications for my future videos. If you are interested in coaching or if you would like to donate, the links are in the video description. The Obsessed Fly Monkeys, Part 2 Any long-term harassment or stalking is not going to be related to anything you have done wrong. It's based off of their out-of-control emotions. They are envious and jealous of you. If this was not the truth, they will be focused on other people who have done the same things or far worse. They act like you are the only one. Like it doesn't matter what anyone else does. Because they are not envious or jealous of the other people. And these are the very emotions which override any rationality, any reason or logic. They make you believe that you have done something wrong, yet they refuse to acknowledge everything that they have done to you. There is no justice or fairness towards you, because they feel as though they have experienced some form of injustice or unfairness. They are still suffering from narcissistic injuries which resulted from envy and jealousy. And every time they see you, it becomes a reminder of that. They targeted your self-worth and self-esteem to make you believe as though they are looking down on you. But the truth is, they see you as being above them. And that's what is triggering them to react in this way. Every time they see you, it triggers them to reflect on how inferior they feel, how worthless and insignificant they feel compared to you. So naturally they are going to feel compelled to pull you down. They will even compete with you at every opportunity. You are a worthy competitor. You are displaying qualities or talents that are worth competing with. If this was not true, then they would not feel so compelled to compete with you. But with this being true, why would they feel the need to target your self-worth and self-esteem? The only reason could be because they do not see you as an equal competitor. They see you as being above them. And that's why there's so many of them and only one of you. That's why they have all of these abusive and manipulative tactics. Denial, projection, blame shifting, gaslighting and the double bind. That's why they will place all of the restrictions or limitations on you. Because you are not only seen as a worthy competitor, but you are also seen as a person who is superior to them. Fly monkeys will go out of their way to be seen. They will walk out in front of you, start talking loud just to get your attention. Some YouTubers have described this as street theatre. 
They need constant attention. It seems to feed their egos, give them a sense of power and control over you. But really, it is an act of inferiority. It displays their dependence on you and their dependence on your reaction to them. In their minds, if you are not seeing them, they do not exist. They will also use your sight and hearing abilities to create illusions which, which they can then use to control your mind. They have an obsession with control due to some form of abuse they experienced in their childhood environment. It may have been public humiliation, exploitation or neglect. And since then, they have decided that it will never happen again. Now they are going to manipulate people. They are going to control everything in their, in, in their environment to prevent that from ever happening again. Now if anyone dares to threaten their egos, they will shift into predator mode. If you put them down or humiliate them publicly, you will unleash emotions which have been built up over many years, even decades. And then they won't stop until they destroy you. They have to get back at you and express their hate, anger, envy and jealousy through some form of passive aggressive behavior. They desperately want to communicate with you, but at the same time, they have a great fear of exposing themselves. So they have to use subtle co covert communication. It's all narcissistic supply. They have to feel in control. They have to feel as though they have one up you or they are better than you for whatever reason. It actually has nothing to do with you personally. Their goal isn't to display to you that they are better than you. That's part of the process. But really they are just trying to convince themselves. They are trying to make themselves believe that they are something great. I notice they have this strange obsession to be in front of me wherever I am walking. Like they want me to look at their backs for, for some reason. I think it's their way of dodging the shame they feel for stalking me. They want to believe that I'm stalking them. So they walk in front of me. In their childhood environment, they were likely abused or neglected. This made them feel worthless and insignificant. They are very ashamed of this. So now they are trying to project this shame onto you through public humiliation and exploitation. They will do whatever they can to avoid reflecting on their shame, but it never goes away. It just gets worse as they grow older. Their way of dealing with it is to project it onto you by publicly humiliating or exploiting you. And for a short time, it does provide them with some relief, but soon enough it comes back again. Along with their inner critic or inner dialogue which was developed from childhood abuse or neglect. Their narcissistic parent made them feel that they are worthless and insignificant. They never dealt with these feelings. Instead, they chose to protect them onto other people. They tried to make other people feel worthless or insig insignificant through public humiliation or exploitation. 
because they don't self-reflect or look within themselves, it can go on for years, even a lifetime. Because we were not designed to resolve these issues by projecting them onto someone else. Fly monkeys have childhood traumas. They feel worthless and insignificant. They have an inferiority complex. They feel intense hatred and anger towards themselves and you. They are also envious and jealous of you. These emotions cannot be resolved by projecting them onto someone else. They can only be resolved through self-reflection. And this is how smear campaigns can go on for years or even a lifetime. Fly monkeys do not self-reflect or look within themselves. So they do not accept responsibility or accountability for anything that they do. They will use manipulative tactics like denial, projection, blame shifting, gaslighting and the, the double bind. They are emotionally immature and a lot of what they do was developed from their childhood environment. They will have temper tantrums, shout and scream, bang doors. It's really no different to a child that cannot get their way. They are not mature, so they do not have good conflict resolution skills. They will hold on to grudges and resentment for years or even a lifetime. The reason why they hold on to this for so long is because they associate these issues with you. They do not self-reflect or look within themselves, so they cannot identify that their grudges and resentment really have nothing to do with you. Their grudges and resentment belong to them. But like with their intense negative emotions of hate, anger, envy and jealousy, they assume that you have something to do, to do with that. Or they will use you as an emotional punching bag to relieve some of these emotions. If they feel a negative emotion, they automatically assume that you have something to, to do with that. They don't self-reflect or look within themselves. So they can't understand how they are generating those emotions. They will take it out on you, either overtly or by using some childish, passive-aggressive tactic, which only ends up feeding into their frustration and resentment towards you. It also locks them into an addiction. Think of a man who has had a stressful day and wants to drink alcohol to relax. The alcohol becomes a coping mechanism. It is a tool which is used to relieve the man's stress. Going to the alcohol when feeling stressed will create a new neural pathway within the man's brain. Relieving his stress is now associated with the alcohol. So next time when the man is feeling stressed, he will have a craving for alcohol. This is how the addiction is created. And it's exactly the same process with the fly monkeys. Before becoming aware of you as a target of the smear campaign, the fly monkey may have had a stressful life. They may have had intense feelings of hatred towards themselves. They may have felt hatred, anger, envy or jealousy towards you or someone else. If the fly monkey was a healthy individual and didn't have these negative emotions or feelings of worthlessness and insignificance, 
they would never agree to be a fly monkey and start stalking and harassing you. People who do the who do these types of things will be deeply dissatisfied or unfilled with their lives. Stalking and harassing you is their way of escaping from reality. It's a form of escapism. And when the fly monkey first started stalking you, it gave them a high, a rush of adrenaline. For a moment they forgot about all the problems in their lives because they were too busy focusing on your life. It gave them an opportunity to unleash all of their frustrations onto you. This created a new neural pathway within their brains which was then associated with relieving their negative emotions or feelings of worthlessness and insignificance with stalking and har harassing you. You became their drug, their addiction. If you left this abusive situation, they would have severe withdrawal symptoms. They would experience stress, anxiety and depression. Fly monkeys will not self-reflect or look within themselves. They do not accept responsibility or accountability for anything that they do. They believe that other people are responsible for how they feel. So there is no way that they could just move on with their lives and never abuse anyone else again. They would have to find another target or victim. Someone else to unleash their frustration onto. Someone to project all of their intense negative emotions on. So the cycle continues. There are times where the fly monkeys may not have access to you. You are not around for them to stalk and harass. During these times they will abuse whoever else is around them. Most often the people closest to them people in their family. They created a new neural pathway in their brains upon abusing you to relieve their intense negative emotions. This created an addiction. So when you are not around, these cravings don't just go away. Fly monkeys will become angry very quickly around their fly around their family members when you are not around. They might create arguments out of nothing just so they can have an opportunity to get their rocks off. So this little hobby of stalking and harassing you soon begins to affect every aspect of their lives. It makes them more frustrated and resentful than ever before. It trains their brains into associating relief of their intense negative emotions with abusing or manip manipulating someone. So whether you are around or not, their cravings to do this are still going to be there. I guess this is their karma. I hope this helps you to have a further understanding of the, th the thought process of the fly monkeys and why they become so obsessed with certain targets. Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonated with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Talk to you soon.